These look like ordinary USB cables, but they're not. They'll steal your data and control your devices. These are called OMG cables, and I'm here today with Mike Grover, who goes by MG on the internet. He's a security researcher and the creator of the OMG cable. Great to have you on, Mike. Thanks for having me. These are really incredible devices. Tell us what an OMG cable is. Yeah, so they are absolutely an ordinary USB cable. They act just like one up until the implant that is hidden inside of them becomes active. And at that point, it allows a, an attacker to remotely control your computer. It allows it to intercept keystrokes and all kinds of other fun things. It's geared for red teamers, security researchers and hobbyists, and awareness training uh, individuals. Um, for those who aren't aware of red teaming, it is a role often in corporate environments where you have a large security team and you need to test their capabilities. A red teamer it's kind of like a subset of pen, pen testing, except they are emulating exactly what a real attacker would do and go through the entire exercise and test all the different things, like not just can they be detected, but how do they respond once they find a detection and can they catch the attacker and all kinds of other things like this. Awesome. These are full of fascinating active electronics uh, inside a very, very small enclosure. So I'd love to take a look at some CT scans of these and learn how they work. Yes, let's do it. This is a CT scan of a very mainstream Amazon Basics USB-C connector. Can you tell us, uh, basically, in a few words, how does a USB-C connector work? How's it supposed to look? Yeah, so in the case of this one, very basic. You've got the four lines and a, actually a fifth one in here, which is great because that is USB-C. So you got two lines for power, two for data, and there's an additional line called the CC line, which allows negotiation for rotation, what the cable does, and all kinds of other things. There's a lot of information on here, and in this case, it's a very simple amount of information being controlled by what appears to be a single resistor in here, which is a compliant way of kind of having a legacy USB cable. So this connector is entirely passive, right? All of the logic is going on in the uh, in the in the device that it's connected to. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, and you can technically consider that uh, resistor in there as kind of a signaling component to tell uh, what what capabilities this cable has, like kind of the, the current handling capabilities, mm -hmm. that type of thing. But it, uh, compared to another scan that we published about a year ago, yeah. this is very, very simple. And that scan is this one of a top of the line Apple Thunderbolt 4 connector. We looked at this, it is full of active electronics. That's and great. seeing this made a lot of people wonder um, what can actually fit inside the enclosure in a simple USB-C connector. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, this, this is the kind of USB-C cable that can do all of the things. All of the things that USB-C promises it can do. Uh, does lots of signaling for what its capabilities are, but lots of uh, basically signal conditioners that allow these really high speed uh, signals to pass through the cable. Like, it's, it's to the point that these uh, speeds are so fast that it has degraded just crossing across the connectors themselves. So it has to be reconditioned at this point before it can pass down the cable. It's, it's amazing, you've got a whole computer inside of your cable now. It's, it's fascinating and there are you know, power supplies on board here. There are, um, I believe, 10 layers in this PCB. Uh, this is a real work of art. And when we published this scan, a lot of people saw it and thought, oh my God, security. And that's when you reached out. You sent us a few of these uh, OMG connectors. So we've scanned one. Let's take a look at what your work looks like uh, inside. Yeah, absolutely. So in here you can see kind of, kind of what looks like a legacy, but also not. You've got all these active components going on too. So I mean, the first thing that probably stands out to you, I would assume is probably a thing in the bottom yeah. Bottom right, right there. What's, like, what's this? Right now, so not all implants need this, but a wireless implant is going to need some form of antenna. So that right there, the thing that stands out most is our antenna. And uh, that gives us uh, 2.4 gigahertz. And a, a 5 gigahertz antenna would look very similar to this, but in this case, we're 2.4. And over here, that really big square on the right, that's the main processor that does all of the things. So this is a full microcontroller? So that is a microcontroller on the side that's doing all of the things I had discussed. You know, gives us a full user control panel, uh, collects all the data, runs all of the keystroke injection attacks and stuff like that. So when you plug this into your device, uh, your device has no idea that it's a compromised cable, right? It, exactly. So if we flip to the other side, we're going to see these data lines that go right into this little thing in the dead center of the board there that's going to be kind of USB pass-through happening here. And th those data lines are just untouched in kind of the, the dormant state of this. Yeah. Uh, only when we want to hijack those lines and start talking will we break that and take over the lines. So this is like a little relay switch almost. The, the microcontroller can decide whether to 
uh, connect you directly to the other end of the cable as you'd expect with a normal USB cable, or it can shunt itself into the connection, exactly. into the line. Exactly, kind of like a railroad tracks, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah it's uh, normal USB or naughty time, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Let's let's talk about uh, how you could detect one of these. You have a special device with you here. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a common question, and there's a funny story behind this, which is, first of all, I make all of these, and and still am finishing all of them and packing them in my house, right? So that created some interesting problems at home. My wife is like, <laughs> which cables are okay to touch? Anymore? Right, right, right. And uh, that's kind of how this came about. It's called the malicious cable detector. It does uh, really high speed uh, power analysis. I think it's about 200,000 scans per second. Power draw to understand what is happening inside of a cable when when you don't have the ability to look. So it's, you know, something cheap that you carry around with you and it's like a first pass. So you would plug it in and a normal cable will show no light. No light, no problem. <laughs> and uh, let's take a OMG cable, we plug that one in. We got a light, there you are. signs of life. You know, that's that's like a first pass of like something's up with this cable, but it doesn't tell you what it does or all of these other things that requires proper forensic analysis. Your tool is a great example of a proper next step. You can scan the contents of the cable and actually see what's going on in there. Yeah, so let's talk about um, you know, something like this could be concealed from an ordinary uh, two-dimensional X-ray, right? Um, we have some of those actually in this uh, in this scan because in order to do a CT scan, you take a series of two-dimensional uh, X-ray images and then stitch them together into a 3D model. Um, so, I mean, here's here's a view, for instance, uh, lengthwise down the the uh, down the side of the connector. Um, all you can really see is some pins and a and a PCB. As we've seen a moment ago, legitimate USB-C connectors have PCBs in them. So how could you hide malicious electronics in something like this and conceal them from a traditional 2D inspection? Yeah, so it, it's kind of complicated in the fact that the person doing the scan has to kind of have a frame of reference of you know what's what's safe look like, mm -hmm. what's contempt, you know, uh, what what's dangerous look like. And as we saw with the Thunderbolt cables, there's already a bunch of stuff in there. You're like, okay, what, what's going on? And in this case, I can't really see a whole lot. Like, I, there's something happening there. I have no idea what from this side angle. And yeah, that uh, unfortunately wouldn't give me much. Now, uh, this stands out to me as, oh, that, that's my cable, because I'm so familiar with it. But if I didn't have that frame of reference, I would still see like, hey, there's that antenna going on in here. Like, what, what, what's that? Hopefully, I've also got a scan of maybe uh, a known good cable that I could also compare it to. That helps a whole lot. Um, that also does not look like the official Thunderbolt cable, for instance. So I didn't design a, th this cable to hide from x-ray devices. I think that's a completely reasonable kind of threshold. Let's not anger the people who have those technologies. But, I, you know, I'm a hacker, so this immediately makes me wonder, well, how could I? And I think there's a really cool opportunity here, which is the main processor in this actually has another piece of silicon hiding inside the main package. So if we zoom in on that, what we're going to start to see it's the bond wires. The bond wires are what connects the raw silicon out to the solder pads of the chip. And you see just this big old ring going around this main uh, piece of silicon in the, se the center here. And perfectly in line rows around the whole perimeter. But then we start going through different slices. And now we can start to see that there's this smaller chip in the middle with these bond wires that kind of go a little bit deeper inside and there's a little shadow you can even see of a smaller chip which is really cool that's incredible so this this is something that would be completely concealed in a conventional two-dimensional x-ray image yeah exactly and i'm already seeing like i could have just moved this smaller piece off to the side and make it line up perfectly with the other bond wires and it's really hard to see and i think that's where the 3d scan really starts to take off and just just to explain what's going on here that main chip the main processor and i have a smaller piece of silicon on top that's for the storage but it doesn't have to be. That could be a malicious chip. And why this matters is because if I wanted to make something malicious, like a drop-in component, I would have to spend a lot of money to just completely rebuild silicon. But if I just strip it apart and put a malicious piece of silicon on top, seal it back up, that's way more cost-effective, for example. So this cable here is really a, uh, a security research device and a training device and a, and a testing device for security teams. But this type of compromised hardware is appearing all over the place. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's happening a lot. It's very rare to see it unless there's a very large event and it just gets out in the public, uh, leaks, or somebody like me who just makes it and then releases 
to the public. And it's good anytime you have that to use that as a reference point. What can you learn from it? How can you detect it? And pretty much all of that stuff. Yeah, it's just, it's incredible to be able to look into one of these things. Uh, it's a great reminder of the complexity of, of the world around us. There, there are active electronics in uh, just about everything in our lives today. Yes. And it's amazing to contemplate that they can be even inside uh, something as small as an ordinary USB-C connector. Mike, it's been great to have you on. If people want to learn more or want to find the OMG cable, where can they go? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I've got a website for these. It's o.mg.lol, because I'm super serious about it. Uh, that's, Good hacker. It's a hacker, real, real uh, website. Yeah. Uh, I've also got my uh, partner, Hack5, hack5.org slash OMG. Um, that's where I've got all my stuff, and you can find contact for me on the o.mg.lol site. Uh, thanks for having me. This is a lot of fun. And uh, can we go play with your machines downstairs? Absolutely. Let's awesome. go run some scans now. Thanks, Mike.